Kavanaugh James. Read the Room. The Holistic Guide to Build and Sustain Meaningful Relationships for Life. Have you ever walked into a room full of people, colleagues, clients, or even friends, and felt uncertain about how to connect with them? You pick up on body language, tone, and expressions, but translating those signals into meaningful connections feels somehow elusive. In our increasingly online world, where relationships can often feel rushed and surface level, the art of truly reading the room has become both a challenge and a powerful skill. The empathy factor. Imagine how good life could be if you felt truly understood and valued in every interaction you had with others. If every conversation left you feeling connected and uplifted and ready to take on the world. This isn't just a dream. It's a reality that awaits you when you master the art of authentic relationships. Think about the relationships in your life right now. Do they bring you joy, support and a sense of belonging? Authentic connections act as a buffer against life's stresses and can even boost your physical health. They're your safety net when you face challenges and your cheerleaders when you celebrate victories. This is also true in your workplace. When you form genuine bonds with colleagues, you're not just making friends. You're creating a more positive, productive environment for others too. You'll likely find yourself more engaged in your work, coming up with innovative ideas and feeling a stronger sense of loyalty to your team. These connections can open doors to new opportunities as people are more inclined to support and advocate for those they trust and respect. At the heart of these skills lies empathy, your ability to understand and share others' feelings. Building empathy starts with self-awareness. Take time to reflect on your reactions and emotional triggers. As you gain insight into your own patterns, you'll lay the groundwork for understanding others better. But this first step isn't always easy. Consider Nadia. As a marketing executive, she saw herself as approachable and friendly. She was surprised to learn her team found her intimidating. By examining her communication style and body language, Nadia realized her fast-paced speech and intense focus were often misinterpreted as aggression. This awareness allowed her to adjust her approach, leading to more open and productive relationships. To develop your own empathy further, practice seeing situations from others' perspectives. This doesn't mean you have to agree with everyone, of course, just make an effort to understand where they're coming from. The next time you face a conflict or are tempted to make a quick judgment, pause and try to put yourself in the other person's shoes. To bridge the gap between how you want to be perceived and how you actually come across, seek feedback from people you trust. Their insights can be invaluable in identifying blind spots in your communication style or behavior. Building your relationship skills is a journey that requires patience, practice, and a willingness to be vulnerable. But as you invest in these skills, you're not just improving your personal and professional life. You're contributing to a more empathetic and connected world. The art of observation. Understanding social cues and dynamics is like learning a new language, the language of unspoken communication. It's a skill that can transform your interactions, helping you navigate social situations with greater ease and confidence. Think of social cues as the subtle signals people send through their body language, facial expressions, tone of voice, and even their use of space. These signals often convey more than words alone giving you valuable insights into others' thoughts and feelings. Let's consider May, a new employee at a bustling marketing firm. In her first team meeting, she noticed her colleague Jamal leaning back in his chair, arms crossed, while their manager discussed a new project. May picked up on Jamal's closed posture and correctly sensed his hesitation about the proposal. By gently asking Jamal for his thoughts later, May not only gained valuable insights, but also began building a rapport with her teammate. To sharpen your ability to read these cues, start by becoming more observant in your daily interactions. Pay attention to people's facial expressions, 
gestures, and tone of voice. Notice how these change depending on the situation or who they're talking to. Understanding social dynamics goes hand in hand with reading cues. It's about recognizing the relationships and power structures within a group. This skill can be particularly useful in professional settings. Take Omar, a freelance graphic designer working with a new client team. By observing how team members interacted, he quickly identified the informal leader, not the project manager, but a quiet senior designer whose opinions seemed to carry the most weight. This insight helped Omar tailor his presentations and collaborate more effectively with the team. To improve your grasp of social dynamics, try this exercise. Next time you're in a group setting, observe how people interact. Who does everyone seem to listen to? Who interrupts others or gets interrupted? These patterns can reveal a lot about the group's dynamics. Remember, the goal isn't to judge or manipulate, but to understand and connect more authentically. By honing these skills, you'll be better equipped to empathize with others, avoid misunderstandings, and build stronger relationships. As you practice, you might find yourself picking up on cues you never noticed before. Maybe you'll sense a friend's unspoken worry or a co-worker's excitement about a new idea. This heightened awareness can lead to more meaningful conversations and deeper connections. Mastering social cues and dynamics takes time and practice. Be patient with yourself as you learn. With each interaction, you're building a valuable skill that will serve you well in all areas of your life, from personal relationships to professional success. Building trust. Trust is the bedrock of any authentic relationship. It's the invisible thread that binds people together, allowing for open communication, vulnerability, and genuine connection. But trust isn't something that appears overnight. It's built gradually through consistent actions and behaviors. Think of trust as a bank account. Every positive interaction is a deposit, while negative experiences are withdrawals. Your goal is to maintain a healthy balance by consistently making deposits, so you've got something to draw from when you need help in return. Consider the story of Amira, a team leader at a software company. When she first took on her role, her team was skeptical of her abilities. Instead of trying to prove herself through grand gestures, Amira focused on small, consistent actions. She always followed through on her promises, actively listened to her team's concerns, and was quick to admit it when she made mistakes. Over time, these deposits added up, and her team came to trust her leadership. One of the most powerful ways to build trust is through vulnerability. This doesn't mean oversharing or being emotionally careless. Instead, it's about showing your authentic self, including your imperfections. Like Marcus, a high school teacher who was struggling to connect with his students until he decided to share his own challenges with learning as a teenager. By opening up about his experiences, Marcus created a safe space for his students to be honest about their own difficulties. This vulnerability led to stronger relationships and a more engaged classroom. To build trust in your relationships, start by being reliable. Follow through on your commitments, no matter how small. If you say you'll call, call. If you promise to help, show up. These consistent actions show others that they can depend on you. Honesty is also crucial. Even when it's difficult, choose to tell the truth. If you make a mistake, own up to it. People appreciate authenticity more than perfection. And trust is fragile. A single negative action can undo multiple positive ones. So if you do break someone's trust, acknowledge it immediately. Take responsibility for your actions and discuss how you plan to make amends. Building trust takes time and effort, but the rewards are immeasurable. As you cultivate trust in your relationships, you'll find that your connections become deeper and more meaningful. You'll create a safe space where authentic communication can flourish.
leading to stronger bonds, both personal and professional. Building bridges with active listening. Effective communication is the bridge that connects you to others, allowing for deeper understanding and stronger relationships. It's not just about what you say, but how you say it, and equally important, how well you listen. At the heart of effective communication lies active listening. This means fully focusing on the speaker, understanding their message, and responding thoughtfully. It's about being present in the moment, rather than simply waiting for your turn to speak. Consider Elena, a social worker who was struggling to connect with a troubled teen named Jake. In their sessions, Elena noticed she was often thinking ahead to her next question or piece of advice while James was talking. When she shifted her approach to truly listen to Jake, giving him her full attention and reflecting back what she heard, their relationship transformed. Jake began to open up, feeling truly heard perhaps for the very first time. To practice active listening in your own life, try this. The next time you're in a conversation, focus entirely on what the other person is saying. Notice their tone, their body language, and the emotions behind their words. Before responding, take a moment to process what you've heard. You might be surprised at how much more you understand and how much deeper your conversations become. Another key aspect of effective communication is clarity. This means expressing your thoughts and feelings in a direct, honest way. It's about being true to yourself while also being considerate of others. Nonverbal communication also plays a crucial role. Your body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice can often speak louder than words. Be aware of these nonverbal cues in yourself and others. A warm smile, open posture, and steady eye contact can go a long way in making others feel comfortable and fostering positive interactions. Remember, effective communication is a two way street. It's not just about expressing yourself clearly, but also creating an environment where others feel safe to do the same. By combining active listening, clear expression, and awareness of nonverbal cues, you'll find your relationships becoming more authentic and rewarding. As you practice these skills, be patient with yourself. Each conversation is an opportunity to learn and grow, bringing you closer to those around you and fostering the authentic connections you seek. Sustaining authentic connections. Once your relationships are more trusting and authentic, maintaining these connections is like tending a garden. It requires consistent care, attention, and nurturing. The initial excitement of a new relationship can eventually fade, but with the right approach, your connections can deepen and flourish with time. One key to maintaining authentic relationships is regular, meaningful communication. This doesn't mean you need to have deep, profound conversations every day. Instead, it's about staying genuinely interested in the other person's life and experiences. A quick check-in text, a shared article that made you think of them, or a brief call can go a long way in keeping your connection strong. For instance, Zara, a busy executive, struggled to maintain friendships due to her hectic schedule. She started setting reminders to reach out to friends regularly, even if just for a quick chat. This simple act of consistent communication helped her friendships not only survive, but thrive, despite her limited free time. Another key to sustaining healthy connections is addressing conflicts promptly and constructively. Disagreements are natural in any relationship, but how you handle them can make or break your connection. If you can, approach conflicts with curiosity rather than defensiveness. Try to understand the other person's perspective, express your own feelings clearly, and work together towards a resolution. Remember, sustaining authentic connections also means allowing them to evolve. People change over time, and healthy relationships grow and adapt accordingly. Be open to these changes, and don't cling too tightly to how things used to be. And to supercharge your connections, practice active appreciation. Regularly express gratitude 
for the people in your life and the positive impact they have on you. This doesn't just strengthen your bond, but encourages reciprocal appreciation. This is a great exercise to practice with total strangers when you're out and about. Looking for positive actions and complementing them hones your observations and gratitude, and they uplift everyone in the process. Finally, don't forget to respect and honour your own boundaries. Authentic relationships thrive on mutual respect and understanding, so it's okay to say no or to ask for what you need. Clear, respectful boundaries actually foster closer connections in the long run. Your boundaries are part of you, so honouring them keeps you balanced and ready to authentically connect with others. Remember, sustaining authentic connections is an ongoing process that requires effort and intention. But the rewards, deeper understanding, mutual support, and genuine connection are immeasurable. As you continue on this journey, remember that every interaction is an opportunity to strengthen your relationships. With patience, care, and consistent effort, you can nurture connections that not only last, but continually enrich your life.